You're listening to the Classic Gamers Guild Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Classic Gamers Guild Podcast. Uh, I'm joined today by Rick and Nana. Say something. Save me. <laughs> no? Hello? Hey. Oh, all right. There we go. <laughs> All right, off to one of our classic epic starts here. Lovely. Sign of things to come. <laughs> well, I don't um, really have very much to report on because I've not actually done anything in the last, like, at least half a week. I, I've actually been in self-prescribed bed rest over my uh, chronic fatigue hitting exhaustion point. So uh, it happens every once in a while, but it just means that I've been sitting in bed uh, playing mobile games. You don't have any good, like, wanks to report on or anything? Good? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's just sort of a constant, but there's no real extra story <laughs> I mean, there. N- nothing exceptional or no story worthy. <laughs> I'm actually thinking that sounds lovely. I'll spend three days in head. I just, I want to do it without the chronic fatigue first. So I just want to feel okay like I do now, but also spend three days in bed and that would be groovy. Yeah, this this self-prescribed bed rest if that could really catch on i think you're onto something <laughs> great idea well i i self-prescribe because like i have to force myself to take the rest or else because i am just like i cannot actually do very much and if i try i'm just not gonna i'm just gonna make it worse i'm gonna prolong my recovery mm-hmm. no and totally those, all in or all out for sure those sound like symptoms i have you know, I can't really do anything. If I do, it'll make it worse. I really should try. <laughs> try this bed rest. Well, this is Rick's oh, I, way. I, I thought you're no longer married, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, God, there's there's a segue in here somewhere. I just I'm not good at them. But between wanking and not being married, you know, just you can piece it together in your head, listeners. The the subject today is is crushes in video games. <laughs> and maybe or maybe not wanking to them. I don't know. <laughs> Come on, we're gamers. Of course we are. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, Rick, I, I think you were going to clarify a little bit on, on, you know, maybe maybe what we mean by crushes, because that can be um, muddied up. Yeah, I mean, this is why I, I totally went into this thinking, like, oh, that'll be easy. It just sort of, uh, you know, there's, I don't need to prepare or anything. Just there's people I can talk about and... Uh, just off the top of my head, I'm sure. And, you know, five minutes before we start recording, we're just sort of like prepping up. I suddenly realized like, wait a minute, I, I can't actually really think of anyone. Like not from the classic era, especially. I kind of thought about it and there's a difference between having a crush on someone and just being lustful for someone. Like there's a difference between looking at someone and being like, oh, they're hot versus actually being infatuated. You know, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm. A difference between, you know, you just see them and you, you want to have it off or you see them and you like, you know, fantasize about a, a, a future or, or even if yeah. it's a, you know, mm. a short future. With them. Yeah, there's there's that crush where it's just sort of like, you know, it's the lingering, right? It's just sort of like when they're not in front of you, you still think about them. That's, I think, what a crush is. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, uh, you know, just you, know, you look at someone and like their boobs are out. Of course, you're going to be like, "Ooh, boobs! That's great. I, I like that. Yes. I want. I want mm-hmm. to see more of that." But you know, you turn off the computer, and then you don't think about them all day. So, exactly. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if we want to turn this into sort of like uh, video game crushes versus video game lusts, or like you know, <laughs> who do we you know drool over versus who do we think about? Or I don't know if we want to clarify that right now. Well, yeah, there's got to be a little bit of a Venn diagram in there somewhere, though. Well, I'm sure there's, you know, they're not mutually exclusive. But it's funny, crushes seem like, uh, it, the, it's depending on how they're reciprocated, it can either be more romantic or more creepy. You know, especially when you were to like, you know, you know oh, I'm I, just, full I keep on creepy. thinking about them. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I'm not in any way not creepy about this. <laughs> That's a definition of crush. I mean, it doesn't have to be quite so high school longing kind of thing, but just sort of, you know, it's when you find mm. that. A character is a draw to you, like, oh, I want to turn on this game because this character is in it, as opposed to, well, since I'm playing this game anyways, I might as well have something nice to look at, right? <laughs> right, yeah. All right, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. I so, I mean, I that. guess we'll go straight into it. I mean, like, um, I- exactly 
out of the same game or other game series, um, I have the uh, example of, um, okay, I'm not going to even try to pronounce her last name, but Mai from King of Fighters and previously Fatal Fury. Um, you know, she's a great lusty character because, you know, she is kind of the pioneer of boob jiggle physics. Oh, uh, that's important. Yeah, which kind of happened like when I was a teenager. So, you know, that's a big, uh, you know, perfect storm right there. But again, that's the sort of like the, well, yeah, if you, if you're a teenager full of hormones and you see boobs jiggling, then of course that's going to like get to you a little bit. <laughs> but then I thought about it. So like, but that's not really the crush. That's a sort of like, Ooh, she's hot. Whereas like later on, I think more circa 2000 and 2001 era of King of Fighters, there's a character, Vanessa, who is at that particular time, not nearly as sexed up. But Mm -hmm. I just thought was so much cooler because she's like this like kind of more tomboyish beer drinker. She's a boxer. You you don't really see (laughs) uh, female fighters who are boxers in video games. And she's like kind of had, you know, this cool red hair. And uh, she was just more attractive by style than by skin. Right. Mm -hmm. More depth to her character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it literally is that I do not buy a King of Fighters game if she's not in it. And so I think that's kind of in a good, pretty good indication by my definition, where it's yeah. like, okay, I look at it and I, I look for two things. I want there to be Vanessa and I want there to be Mai, because um, mm-hmm. Mai still has boob jiggle physics and I still want that around. But <laughs> uh, but even though Mai is in like every single game, because she's actually kind of her popularity is enough that she kind of carries the series. Like they would mm-hmm. never have a game without her not to my knowledge if they did it's a stupid decision but despite her omnipresence throughout the series i haven't bought them since like 2002 or three or whatever the last one vanessa was in Mm -hmm. so yeah that's um i think there was one more game maybe a little bit later on i forget what number it was i think that's the last one i bought and it wasn't that great so but you know at least i tried it and it was because they're both in there so yeah, that yeah, that fits tells, that yeah. fits it pretty well. So you see, basically, you need you need Vanessa or my in it, and then fighting no, both. and or I need both. Kings, like, both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the, the, all the games have my in it, but that's not enough for me. Like I said, that's she's great to have around if I'm playing it anyways. Mm-hmm. Whereas you know, if the game doesn't have Vanessa in it, I'm like, well, I'm not really all that interested in this anymore. Right. You need two girls to keep you satisfied. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the the fighting, the king of, all that is optional at that yeah. point, as long as supposed yeah. <laughs> But you're right, Vanessa, she she sort of exudes a confidence. So I, I yeah, can see exactly. why you'd be, a, yeah, for sure. Yeah, she's got that sort of attitude that's not, like, defined by attitude. Like, she's not, like, the, the sassy, spunky attitude girl or anything. She's just sort of, like, yeah, she's, like, this blue-collar boxer, beer-drinking. Uh, mm-hmm. And even that's kind of exaggerating it already like she's just this like real toned down character Mm -hmm. and i just you know the the way she's presented and like her personality traits for a fighting game her personality traits uh, (laughs) are really quite attractive so yeah that'd probably be uh one of my biggest crushes anyways i mean i have maybe one more and as i think of possibly another i'll let you guys do some talking because i've been kind of dominating all this (laughs) that's all right i'll follow this up in in a completely different direction and say uh I had a pretty good crush on uh, Manny Calavera from Grim Fandango. Really? I did. I I had a lot of respect for him. You know, he went from being a travel agent <laughs> to a nightclub owner. He was hanging out with a demon. Like, come on. This is a guy who does whatever he has to do to keep a job. Yeah. He's down for boning. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> But I don't know. The game was great. I loved the styling. I liked his attitude and the way that he interacted with the other characters. I I kept wanting to come back to the game because uh, I thought he was kind of cute for for a dead guy. So Anna does not like a lot of meat on the bones. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, hey, if you ever go to the land of the dead, he's the guy you want to take 
on a date. Like, and okay, thinking back to the age that I was <laughs> when I was playing this, I wasn't even thinking about the sexy time. I was like thinking about no, companionship and I was yeah. thinking about smart conversation and, and somebody well dressed and handsome that can handle himself in any situation was really an attractive trait to teenage me. That's right. You're a female, so traits are important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we like things like that. <laughs> uh, I can kind of see that though. I mean, the whole thing exudes of that noir genre, right? So he's mm -hmm. kind of got that. Um, I, I don't know how to describe it, but you know, it's just that sort of noir style about him. It's classy. He's classy. Like he's got a, a way that he's going to behave, where you know he's going to be respectful, but you know, in his head, he's thinking what the real truth is, and I like that. Mm. And you'll probably get a discount on your travel package through uh, the afterlife. <laughs> well, I'm hoping if, if somebody out there is listening, I, I am looking for a discount. On just about anything. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah shoot, shoot me some good numbers. I, I'll be happy to listen to what you have to say. But, uh, yeah. And I mean, in the end, you know, he's a guy that got his girl, right? So I think uh, I think that's all right. And then, well, no, actually, I think at the end he had to say goodbye to her, didn't he? <laughs> I have not finished Grim Fandango. <laughs> it's been a long time since I played <laughs> that one, but either way, you know, there was potential, so yeah. that's that's good. <laughs> actually, you're kind of right about that too. Even a lot of the games that I have finished, I don't rem exactly remember what happens at the end. And then I'm like, I did finish this game, right? Like in my head, I'm I'm like, I did finish this. But then when I'm reading through it or playing through it again, I'm like, but I think it's because you play the beginning a few times over and oftentimes you play the end bits only once. So it doesn't stick as much, maybe. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I guess that that's my first choice. Paul, what about you? Oh, his internet died. There you go. Well, while Paul is uh, tending to something at the moment, I guess... Uh... There's one thing I want to throw in, perhaps they'll say sort of like kind of opposite direction, just as kind of a dishonorable mention. Yeah, I used to work at an EB Games back in the day, mm -hmm. right around like the uh, towards the tail end of the PS2 era. So like I was there when PS3 launched, let's put it that That's way. That's a good time, actually. <laughs> oh, it was great. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, obviously that was a really good time for a lot of JRPGs across various different um, systems like uh, the PS2 and the PSP out at that time and stuff like that. And I can't believe how many um, of these artists on the games don't seem to know what female bodies look like. <laughs> and it, it really does seem like somebody who has never even seen a woman in any shape or form including like art or drawings or anything like that, and was basically having a woman describe to them and them <laughs> drawing it based on vague concepts, right? Like, hey, they have these two circular things on their chest. Oh, like <laughs> giant globes? Well, no. Well, that's how I interpret it. So that's like the Willie Beamish nurse we talked about on yes. the other episode. They just like we don't we get the concept that they are there. We just don't quite grasp the placement because we've never touched them or seen them properly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a great. That's a great example. I actually forgot about it until you reminded me. That's uh, <laughs> uh, there, there's another one. Dragon's Crown. I think mm -hmm. the thing is Dragon's Crown. Is it? Um, has dragon in the title. It's like a beat 'em up game, and they just have like the most exaggerated features. Like, uh, you know, there's this one woman whose like head is tiny compared to like a larger and uh, very muscular torso, but like these gigantic, like three times the size of the rest of her legs. And then there's like the the sorceress who's very famous because like her breasts extend out beyond her arms, pretty much. Oh, I'm point. looking at a picture of her right now. Yeah. Oh boy, she's wearing like a witch's hat and it makes sure that the, her chest protrudes out farther than the brim of her hat. Yeah. See, Lovely. that is actually like the opposite effect. I I probably will never play that game just because I feel that that is like a direct insult on me as a player. Well, they're going to knock the hat off as soon as she jumps. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I just, I, I can't, like, that is the exact opposite effect of what they probably were thinking. I, I look at that and I look at some of these other JRPGs in the PS2 era where it's sort of like, we don't know anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, you know, at, at this point, I almost feel bad 
if I were to play her games. Mm-hmm. Like that, I would feel shame. <laughs> Cause, cause, Somebody's gonna like complain that I'm doing something inappropriate just by playing this game. I know it. it, it no, it's not even that. It's not even like the accusation. I, I can handle that. And I'm sure, like to some on, on a mechanical level, I'm sure they're good enough games. Or like a story wise, perhaps they're uh, pretty good. You know, JRPGs are all about stories, and most of them are you know pretty decent at at the very least. But it's more just that sort of like. Uh, you know, if I play the game, if I buy it, or if I dignify it in any way, it almost kind of like justifies them doing it. Mm-hmm. Whereas I kind of, you know, not that anyone listens to one person's opinion, but I'm just sort of like, well, no, I'm not going to dignify that because maybe you should. I- I'm not even against like sexy female characters at all in the slightest bit. I I like them. I want there to be more of them. You you, you know me. I'm very pro female and pro sexy women and stuff like that. It's just, you know, you can't just, like, throw in this, like, almost insulting to everyone involved depictions. You know, I want you to do it right. I want you to actually make them, like, good art. Mm -hmm. Well, I've never seen them do that with male endowment as that it is so big you would know that if he took a step, he would fall (laughs) over and maybe trip on it. I mean, I, I don't, I get it though. Nobody wants to see that. That's why they haven't done it, right? I mean, I don't want to see that either, but <laughs> fair enough. I think there are some games where uh, they have actually uh, put in, uh, y- when you design a custom character, I-, I think maybe one of the Saints Rows or maybe something else where there mm-hmm. is actually like you can, um, there's like the slider for sexiness. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, if you're a female character, it's it really just like, blows out your boobs and if you're a male i think it actually does like you know increase the size of your junk um there's some games that actually do take a little bit more seriously but it's still there Uh, i forget exactly which ones they're a lot more modern i haven't really paid too much attention other than articles that point out that there's like um a slider for dong length or whatever well you bring (laughs) up a good point Uh, i'm playing saints row three and the first thing i did was make the boobs it's bigger automatically for my character because it had yeah. the option to do so. And I'm not used to playing newer games that give you the option to customize in that way. So I'm like, this is so cool. And she's so badass. She's got like scars on her face and nice. she's got tattoos and she's she's super hardcore. But I think she's super hot. Like, I don't know, maybe if I had a crush, I'd kind of have a crush on her right now. And like the purple hair. And mm-hmm. I mean, she is like quite a kingpin. So yeah, I guess I do kind of disqualify characters. <laughs> Characters that I'm allowed to create for myself. Exactly that's kind of, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I find her hot. I made her. Yeah, it's like, it's like weird I, science. <laughs> I designed them to my exact specifications <laughs> of what I find attractive. Like, yeah, exactly. yeah, that's not that. There's no credit to go to the game designers for that. <laughs> you know, if we're going to go in that way, then I enjoy the entire custom roster of my WWE 2K18. <laughs> But yeah, so just wanted to throw that out there while we uh, continue to wait for Paul to return, um, which he hasn't yet. That was a good segue, though. That was that was a good conversational topic. And like I said, it's true to me if if the physics don't work. Like I said, I'm still looking at chick with the pointy boobs. If it looks like they're going <laughs> to smack her in the frickin face and she's going to have two black eyes every mm-hmm. time she does something, it's not going to work. Yeah. And on the topic of uh, Saints Row. Number one, I appreciate that it's totally equal opportunity. Like, <laughs> sure, you can choose the uh, size of your breasts on a female character, but you can choose the size of the guy's junk in the male character, too. So, you know, it's uh, good for the goose, good for the gander, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, and honestly, I actually do really... I, I don't really go for the big exaggerations. When I, when I design a character, you know, typically if I design a female character, I do really go for more modest proportions because I just mm-hmm. think that's a little bit more attractive. I do the same thing in The Sims. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my, mine are generally fit, but modestly uh, put together. But in, like I said, this was the first time I played a game ever because I'm, I'm such an old school gamer. I'm only playing the old stuff that I'm like, the, these kind of look like actual people and I can actually make them look however they want. This is, this is a really cool novelty to me. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think I wanted to go out of my way to create a character that was a little bit more out there that was like the kind of character that would be in that position. Yeah. You know, like she couldn't just be like modest and kind of fit and all of that because then be like, well, how the heck did this this girl get there? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, and uh, actually, here is Paul back now. Glad to have you back, Paul. Ta da. Uh, I, hey. guess, I guess now, now that I'm done stalling for time, I guess you can take your turn. Oh, right on. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll start with the only. The only proper probably crush on my list. Uh, the rest, the rest is the rest of my entries are just kind of jokey from here on out. <laughs> 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 but this one's this one's got maybe some charm to it because it's it's sincere. Um, Laura Bow from Dagger of Amon Ra for sure. Ooh, All right. I, I I I don't know what it was. It's something about the uh, the. Uh, I don't know what you call it. They're not really cutaways because they're not animated, but the, the close up, the portraits, there we go, the portraits of mm -hmm. her in, in what that blue dress that she's wearing. And, and just like she had these very like dainty poses about her and, and also redhead, kind of a sucker for that too. Yeah. Um, I'm with you on that. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's like, you know, you're classy, but you're also probably crazy, maybe in a good <laughs> way. I'm willing to find out. Let's roll that dice and <laughs> see what kind of crazy you are. Uh, <laughs> Um, but here's where it gets creepy. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> P people might complain though if you say crazy like that. Apparently, that's not a good term anymore. Oh, uh, that's right. God, there's only like six things left we can joke about now. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's really, such a bummer. <laughs> um, sorry, everyone. Well, as you know. as somebody with mental health issues, I will grant it this one time. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm not. I didn't bring that up because I'm offended. I'm actually kind of a little bit distraught over the fact that we can't say crazy anymore. Because sometimes mm -hmm. crazy is just the word to use, right? Yeah, isn't that the name of a song? You know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Have... What if I say like <laughs> mad? No, no. It's still apparently. It, apparently, it's called ableism now or something like um, that. Like, yeah. But I was, sorry, I, hoping... I just totally derailed this. I didn't mean to do that. No, it's all, it's all right. It's a valid point, too. And the people that are angry are happy that you're doing it. They're like, you better bloody teach him a lesson right now. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets one, all right? I don't want to hear any of this going forward. Um, I'm, a, I'm a single fellow. I should mention that going forward. I don't know that that helps at all, but, but uh, you know, it gets a little lonely Interesting sometimes. dynamic between us all. <laughs> yeah. So at some point, I, I actually opened up Dagger Vaman Ra in, in SCI Companion because uh, I was interested in extracting those those portrait skills. This sounds horrible <laughs> saying it out loud. I'm tempted to request this to be edited out, but I'm way steep. Why not? Uh, <laughs> what I did with said stills, uh, you can you can make that up with your imagination, but no. you know. It, no, if you're I think picturing we need me, to hear it. Yeah. If you're picturing me lighting some some incense or scented candles and just really getting to know myself, then you're right. Okay, maybe I didn't need you to say. <laughs> I love pixelated nipples. What can I say? Really, <laughs> even in real life, if I meet a woman and her nipples aren't square, I'm very disappointed. <laughs> Wait, hang on a second. Did you find pixelated nipples of Laura Bow in the SCI companion? <laughs> I'll message you after the show, mate. <laughs> yeah, we, we need picture proof. I'm down for that. I, I think the first time I ever experienced anything close to nudity was obviously Leisure Suit Larry 1. I'm even intrigued by the hooker upstairs. I'm just like, damn, that girl could potentially be interested in me if I could just figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that uh, line from Arthur with Dudley Moore where he's like, you're a hooker? I thought I was just doing really well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you want to see Laura Bow naked, you can in the Colonel's Request. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, was there a bloody shower curtain in front of her, though? Because that don't count. Well, no. If you take the shower, she undresses, and she turns around so you don't see front wall, but you see her mm -hmm. uh, naked from behind. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> <laughs> just just imagine on this day, around 3.30 a.m., Paul was doing something very creepy and inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> if you're into the college girls rather than career women. <laughs> <laughs> you got to think of the ages we'd be playing these games, I suppose. That that must put, at least for me, I hope it puts some of my crushes in perspective. Although, actually reading over my list, they'd make sense for a 40-year-old woman, too, so I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> Are you? Do you still have a crush on a skeleton man? Yes. Okay, that's all we need to know. <laughs> yeah, you, you came out of the gate with a, with a skeleton man, so I, I don't think the super high. I want to know how it goes downhill from here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but let me ask you both real quick before we get we drift too far from it. Were either of you also disappointed that Larry had to wear a condom with that prostitute? Like, even though it was going to happen vicariously through a fictional digital character, I was still like mm -hmm. bummed knowing mm -hmm. that we had to wear one. Is that horrible? I didn't, 
I didn't know what a prophylactic was. And even after playing the game, I mean, it didn't exactly go up close and show you. So I don't think I had a full concept yet. Yeah. I am steadfastly in favor of wearing condoms while having sex with strange women. <laughs> well, that's that's just no fun at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not a concept I would have thought about as a kid. I didn't. Uh, I didn't think like that. You know what? Fair enough, though. I'm I'm the one with a child and an itchy crotch, so I guess you win this round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good point. I don't think I can say much here either, but I don't have an itchy crotch at this time. <laughs> So is that all you have to say about Laura Bow? Is pretty much she's cute, but potentially you could put nipples to show on her and she'd be cuter and you like her dress. Yeah, that was supposed to be my charming answer, but when you when you deduce it to its basic <laughs> fundamentals, it's not very charming at all. You know, she had a bloody great personality, of course, <laughs> so that's the charming bit. Um I don't know. Uh the thing with Laura I'm not I feel like we've said this before i just can't remember if it was ever on tape or you know or on recording but um laura bow I, I don't know about her because like you'd think a crush is more just sort of like relationship -y rather than just like lust and um she she's really snoopy like i don't think she respects privacy i, I, I you know she has that <laughs> thing where she like she'll go through yeah. your <laughs> no, notes and journals and listen to your voicemail and She's stuff a like that to find out heart. what's going on. Yeah, yeah. She wants. She wants to watch. Yeah, she would. <laughs> <laughs> that almost sells it. Um... <laughs> but Rick was trying to desexualize it, and Anna brought us right back. Thank you, dear. Um... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Laura would definitely go through your phone and ask you who, you, why you friended a girl on Facebook that night, kind of thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, because she'll ask you about everything. <laughs> if you know anything about the game, she'll she'll find something out and ask you about it directly, like, Im immediately, I should say. She'll, she'll outfit every door in the house with bizarrely large keyholes. <laughs> <laughs> but at least her standards are pretty much anyone who's not a serial killer. <laughs> yes, that's where I come in. <laughs> I, I don't have much for you, baby, but I'm not that. Here I am. Yeah, you're up, Rick. All right. Um, okay, again, like I said, it's hard to come up with like legit crushes. This is sort of in the middle. Uh, a little bit more than just a lust, but not really quite a crush. But it's, I, I'm really slim pickings here, so I'm just going with like anything that almost registers. Um, but from the Blade Runner adventure game, Crystal Steel. Hmm. I think it's Crystal, right? She's the, she's the other Blade Runner, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not accidentally picking the 14-year-old girl, right? I want to make sure I get this name right. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> well, the plus side, if you accidentally pick the 14-year-old girl, at least we'd finally get more emails. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, Crystal Steel is the other Blade Runner, and Lucy Devlin is the 14-year-old girl. So, not Lucy. Not Lucy. Although, but... if you picked it in 1997, you would have been, what, like 17, 18? Yeah, so... it would have been... Well, no, even then, you know, those three years really make up a lot when you're <laughs> that age. Um, but, I don't know. Uh, I mean, Lucy's not a replicant, is she? Like, I can't remember if there's any of the paths in the game where it leads to her being a replicant. Like, she's always been uh, a fourteen-year-old girl, right? I think she's just a girl. She okay. was, she had issues with replicants, but that's it. Yeah, I, I can't remember because I think there were times where they kind of like suggested she might be. And, mm -hmm. and I know some characters uh, have the option to be on certain randomized storylines, but uh, I guess Lucy is always a human, fourteen-year-old girl. Um, you know, so she can six years. When she's 20, yeah, sure, she can call me. She's actually kind of cute if she were older. <laughs> but 14, no, 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 absolutely not. Um, so I am talking about Crystal Steel, the Blade Runner, the um, who is sometimes a replicant, but I don't know. I'll take her as she is. Um, yeah, Lucy would be like, I'll hit you up on TikTok. And you'd be like, the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I haven't even really gotten into Snapchat yet, and they already have right. a new. Yeah. <laughs> she's a good choice, though, because she's kind of like, she's she's kind of got attitude, and, and as things go along, she ends up mellowing out and, and kind of not being 
yeah, so we're, much of a bitch. To we're, we're still talking about Crystal so. here, right? Yeah, we're talking okay. about Crystal. Okay, yeah. I just really want to make sure no one really is clear on No, we're, we're done with <laughs> okay. Lucy now. I'm All just right. saying you kind of get her respect throughout the game. So it yeah. kind of feels like you're accomplishing something with this woman who's not super easy to impress, right? Yeah. she's kind of got opinions. Yeah. I mean, like, number one, she's uh, – her – her um her voxels are all in the right places to begin with, uh, but uh, but um, yeah, it, you know, there's a thing. You know, she's got that mix between badass and fa- fatale kind of mm-hmm. thing. More badass. She's not really quite like the uh, the whole femme fatale stereotype or anything like that. But she's got that. You know, she's got that badass. She's got that kick ass. She's got like you know, she's a she's a Blade Runner. That's just right there alone that's already like a plus five um mm-hmm. on the scale right so uh yeah i mean I like, like i said it's not like a, it's not like a full crush but mm-hmm. it's definitely you know i i definitely had a thing for her while i was playing it uh and you know just sort of like hey you know she was cool and i i totally wanted our characters to hook up at some point so i think that kind of means something too mm-hmm. i feel like she's the kind of girl that would introduce a nice timid lad to what pegging means. <laughs> She's just got this real take control of the situation kind of vibe about her. She definitely knows what she means and means what she knows. So I can picture that. I might be picturing it. So. <laughs> well, you're welcome or I'm sorry. I'm not sure. <laughs> now, she reminds me of um, a bit of like Vera from uh, Whispers of a Machine. Same with mm. um, Maureen from Full Throttle. Mm. Same kind mm-hmm. of vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Her mind. Yes. Yeah. That that character. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, good one. <laughs> from that game I totally played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with Maureen, they didn't draw her in the most flattering way. Like she, she didn't, she didn't come across as particularly attractive. But there was something in that personality. I, I've always loved motorbikes. For anyone that knows me, knows that. So maybe it had something to do with that too. Yeah, the mechanics girl. You know, even though she's covered up and tasteful she's kind of badass and you're kind of hoping when she takes off all the tools and maybe even washes her hands a bit at night time that she'd really like be innovative and wild yeah yeah like i feel like she would have like a surprisingly girly tattoo for somewhere for me to find <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> not necessarily a tramp stamp but something you know somewhere sorry if i've offended any listeners that have a tattoo in a particular area <laughs> <laughs> oh they know what it's called they wouldn't have got it there if they didn't want it to be uh oh, boom yes mean, if they point. didn't want it to mean something we're not judging unless it's a bullseye <laughs> then i'm judging <laughs> positively <laughs> so uh yeah i've, I've actually ha <sighs> I've I've made my second choice and I'm still satisfied with it, but I've done a little bit of Googling and I see that the actor who plays my choice in this game was born in 1955. <laughs> <Which> <laughs> I was kind of thinking he was a guy playing a guy in his 30s, which he kind of was considering the game came out in the 90s, but I guess he was a guy in his 40s, almost 50s at the time. But fine. Okay. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Tex Murphy, who was played by uh, Chris Jones, who actually made the game. He's the designer and developer. Oh. Uh, specifically, Tex Murphy from Under a Killing Moon. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, cause... got that the grizzled P. Well, not even grizzled, really. He's He's a little more aloof than, than grizzled. Yeah, he, he's kind of aloof. He's got attitude. He's, he's, he always, he, ca- he catches me off guard. It was the first game I think I played where you, you would click on what you wanted him to say, but it was just a little clip, like a few words. And then when he'd actually talk, it would be really, really elaborate and there'd be a lot more to it. Uh, and, and plus James right. Earl Jones did the narration. So how could I not fall in love with everything to do with that game? Yeah, fair enough. Um, so I know Tex Murphy is a series. Which game in particular was that one again? Uh, Under a Killing Moon. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, if you just look him up, he's got that. Now, I, at that age, like when I played this, I was into 
uh, Night Court, you know, Harry, the yeah. judge, yeah. you know, guys like that that were kind of cute. Tony Danza from Who's the Boss uh, or Charles from Charles in Charge. I mean, I really liked that sort of uh that kind of nice all-around guy or the uh the sassy guy that that was really smart or in a case like this a guy in the future that's like dealt with world war three and uh and really knows what's up and and finds out his life is shit and and is really able to turn it around and uh and discover a bunch of problems i'd bloody i'd bloody let charles be in charge i'll tell you that <laughs> yep right <laughs> i tell you yeah, I don't know. He's kind of like he played a character who's like Roger Wilco, but with more specific intent. And mm-hmm. instead of the narrator being sarcastic, you're sarcastic, but it's also funny and sassy. So I don't know. That stuff turns me on. I love it. Like if I was a girl, I would I would show one of them like Roger or him like my boobs just to make their day. You know, be mm-hmm. like he really deserves this. Uh, this <laughs> would mean a lot to him. You know, if you've got boobs, they're a gift. You should give them. I think that's a polite thing to do. <laughs> that only counts for one of the genders, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I wonder what letters we're going to get after this episode. This should be fun. Oh, come on. No one ever writes us. <laughs> <laughs> but Even yeah, if I... to complain, no one writes to us. Let's be honest. But I think I... we've had like two people address the show before. Right, and and hopefully at least one of them it was not in a negative manner. <laughs> um, one was in a questioning manner, but it's fine. <laughs> oh, great! Fifty percent of our letters have been <laughs> have been slightly <laughs> negative. That's that's really sad. Uh, it was more just a heads up. Makes me appreciate Father Beast all the more. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just to finish up on my apparent old guy crush. Uh, well, it makes sense. I love Al Lowe too, right? So, I mean, of course I'd like this guy as well. But, uh, mm-hmm. he ends up foiling a, a doomsday plot, which I think is really cool. But the, the one thing I think that attracted me to this, uh, to him in this game is there was a built in hint system. So I felt like I could really get somewhere. And that made me feel warm and fuzzy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we are two different species, the male and the female. <laughs> 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 You're like finally a male who just will stop and ask for help if he needs it. That's just so attractive. <laughs> well, my uh, tastes you, have changed over the years. <laughs> all right, mate. You you had mentioned earlier that, that one of the earliest boob jigglings that you saw was in, mm-hmm. uh, I think, King of Fighters, whatever. Uh, I Fiddle think Fury pre- Two. That's when they introduced her, uh, the character of my. Okay, of my who? Oh, her name's Mai. Sorry, that was yeah. <laughs> that wasn't like a Dudley Moore joke or whatever. Um, <laughs> I think I think the earliest boob jiggling I can think of is is the end of King's Quest Free. Once you free Rosella, when once you untie her, she follows you around till you, till you get back to the castle. And and I think them them boobs are jiggling. They're, they're moving really? up and down. I I, yeah, I never do. finished King's Quest Three, so I'll just have to take your word for it. All right, Anna, what do you think? You think they were jiggling, or, or am I just wanting them to? I see them jiggling, but it's probably because I just want them to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll throw it to the listeners, then. It, listeners, if, if you know, let me know if, if I'm... Well, if I, any I of I, the animators on King's Quest Three is out there, uh, either listening to this show, or if anyone listening to this show knows the animator from King's Quest Three, yeah. please ask them. Wasn't if, Al Lowe involved in this game a little bit? He's done some yeah. work on it, yeah. So yeah, I mean, he could just was exactly. he the was he the artist? Mm. I don't no, know what he did on it. That would have been McNeil or Crow. Yeah, we, we right. just have well, to blow up all their twitters. So, somebody getting you know go through the right channels and find this out for us. Is Rosella the first historical instance of boob jiggle physics? I would Get really love us. it if she is. If my heroine is the first there as well, I'm just, I'm going to have to buy another big box of the game. <laughs> <laughs> It'd always be worth me playing it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Rick will finish King's Quest Three. It'll be worth the chores and dying in order to get to that point. The only way I'd ever replay King's Quest Three is if I had a handful of Xanax, because the game <laughs> stresses me the fuck out with a timer. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, let, let us know. And if you can't get a hold of the creators, you know, bloody 
I'm disappointed, first of all. <laughs> but let, let me know if you, if you think they're jiggling, because I'm pretty positive they are. It, it's, a, it's a good jiggle. Like, they didn't bother animating her arms. They keep them down to the side so that, the, so that you can see the jiggle, I think. I mean, they're jiggling so much, instead of being turned on, I just want, like, a bowl of cereal. That's how much they're jiggling. <laughs> I mean, yeah, devil's cause advocate Mark. here, because again, I, I can't speak on this, but do you think there's a possibility that it wasn't deliberate and it was just like the limited uh, graphical capabilities of the time? I would say no, only because I'm comparing how she walks to how he walks. And he's animated differently. His legs and arms move, and for her, her feet and upper body all moves up and down. I would simply say that at the time, unless I'm mistaken, the only animators at Sierra were male, so therefore, no, it's not an accident. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, 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 it's entirely possible. I just, uh, uh, I, I'm just curious because I know that, like, you know, uh, Kings West Three was AGI, so I know they only had like ten pixels to work with. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. When it, it is surprising. The reason I'm doubting myself is, is more than anything just because it's King's Quest. That was like the cleanest, most mm -hmm. PC uh, of them all. And, and to, yeah, it almost makes you wonder how it slipped by. Um, maybe maybe they they told R Roberta that it was part of the walk cycle. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. Maybe I'm, that's I'm why that game is so me. popular after all these years. <laughs> the real truth. Um, so, Paul, while you were absent earlier, Anna and I were talking about things that... Uh, we do not find, or at least I was talking about things that I did not find attractive in video game characters, uh, physically more than anything else, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so I was wondering if there's anything you or any characters that you think were like supposed to be hot, but just failed, or is there anything that's sort of like a type that you just don't find attractive to? Yeah, I've got two. Um, the first one would be any any female character that was like overtly 80s. And what I mean by that is that they, they looked like they were like out of like a white snake video, you know, just there was just something. <laughs> but but the other one is is more seriously, actually maybe less seriously, whatever it doesn't matter. The other one is when I see a character and it makes it invokes a sense of smell. Kathy um, Rain. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Old I, cigarettes and leather. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I feel like her bits would smell moldy or something. Uh, like it's, she never it's, changes. She never showers. She never brushes her teeth. No. She wears leather in the rain and smokes. Uh, yeah. And, it's yeah. So dirty. Yeah, like a cigarette butt that came out of the washing machine. Like, ooh, yeah. I can't. <laughs> I bet she like she keeps a half butt in the pack in her pocket too. She just puts it out yeah. with her fingers, <laughs> chucks it back in the pack, walks back inside. You're just like, oh damn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? Okay, and, and this also kind of broke the seal because um, now we're talking about the modern game, so it uh, allows me to uh, um, get in like sort of honorable mention because I know we try to focus on classic, but it is classic style indie. So uh, Rosangela Blackwell. You know, mm -hmm. was actually really quite endearing to me, and I really yeah. quite yeah. Uh, I, I think she really did draw me into the whole series, so I'll throw that mm -hmm. one out there. Man, I really like the redheads, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, okay. seriously, like my my next pick is actually going to be what I thought was going to be more obvious. I'm surprised we got this long without mentioning her, but uh, I was going to brush past this one because everyone already knows this. It's kind of cliche at this point, but uh, Katrina from Quest for Glory: Shadows of Darkness. Yeah, again, obviously. redhead for some reason. Uh, apparently that's a thing for me, but, um, but you know, Katrina, if you're listening to this podcast, you know, Katrina, <laughs> I, I don't need to explain myself on that one. No. And exactly. And who didn't cop a feel at least the first time, if not tried to a few times to go, maybe if you do it the right number of times and you won't die and something will actually come of it. I'm batting 1000. <laughs> when you say Copperfield, I wasn't thinking of the hero trying to Copperfield. I was thinking of us personally. I'm like, that would just be a bunch of cold glass, wouldn't it? Like, you wouldn't. It's just a monitor. I get it. I get it. Yeah, no, that's a good pick. I, I almost wonder if April O'Neil did this to me, set me up for a lifetime of lusting after redheads. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but while we're while we're glossing over some some not so classic ones, uh, another one I've got got to mention that she's. She had a lot to do with me sticking through the bulk of the game, and that would be Yuri from Doki Doki Literature Club. Oh, oh God, of yeah. course, yeah. Obviously. I was like proper into her. I was, yeah, I was right like, away. This could work. We could right work. away. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I can deal with your little inconsistencies for now. Oh, mm. I can make you happy. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to save her. 
Mm-hmm. Exactly. So bad. Especially by the time she really started feeling viable, it was sort of like, you know what this game is up to. You know what they're yeah. doing. Yeah. And I just uh, really want to stop them from doing it. Exactly. Not her. I love her hair. <laughs> oh, she's just, she's so cute. Yeah. Now, I, I kind of disqualified that one just because I was like 39 or 38 when I played that <laughs> game. And they are like, are they high school or university or something that they're really... Not, They're young, for yeah. Sure. yeah. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I might Take have to back request those an edit. things you've done. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to tell age with a cartoon. All the skin is so smooth. I don't know. <laughs> but you know, going back to a little hit on Quest for Glory, which isn't really modern games, but every time I'd play the game, I'd always name the hero after whatever guy I was currently dating. Oh. So technically, kind of, I always had not only a crush on my hero, but I always wanted to see them ex- succeed because I always place whoever I'm with on a bit of a pedestal. Mm. So they're kind of a hero. So I don't know. Maybe okay. that fits. Well, at least you actually got to sleep with the hero. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Every time. All right. Let's see. Um, who's who's go? Uh, you know, I'll just I'll just I'll take the lead here. So. Uh, Anna already already broke the ice with with a with a sort of real life person by by mentioning Chris Jones, uh, aka Tex Murphy. I, I wasn't sure if I was going to go here because it, it is a little weirder. Actually, I guess not because you can have a crush on a on a celebrity in a movie or whatever. But uh, but I thought it was maybe just a little weirder bringing up a, an FMV character. But I did have quite a crush on on Grace Nakamura from Gabriel Knight too. Um, mm. I was when hoping I say, you were going to say Night Trap. <laughs> 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 no, you know, when I played Night Trap, my beans hadn't dropped yet, so I didn't know what to do with all them <laughs> feelings. But no, and you know, when I say from when I played Gabriel Knight, that was like a month ago, so I, <laughs> this is pretty fresh. <laughs> as, a, as a 36-year-old man, I'm, I'm really into uh, to Grace. Her real name's Joanne. That's as creepy as I got with it, all right? So, I did so look this at is IMDb. Grace from uh, Gabriel Knight 2, then? Because you said FMV? Yeah, and I, I was, I'll admit I was creepy enough to, to go on IMD, but I did the same for... Uh, for um, Dean Erickson as well, so I guess it wasn't just a sexual thing. I just wanted to see what she had done with her career, but um, which I think it kind of stopped there. But either way, she, I, yeah, she was lovely. Yeah, I've never, uh, I've never finished the game myself, but I'm, I'm just having a look at some pictures, and yeah, she's definitely cute. She's sassy. She's got those sharp, shrewd eyes that can kind of pick you apart and disassemble you to your basic components, and then you know do what she wants with the pieces. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I I think I am out of picks now. I think Anna, are you caught up or are you one behind? Um, no, I think I'm I'm caught up with uh you guys. I was kind of thinking, you know, Ed, what about Edgar from King's Quest Four? Because he like <laughs> he could have had something, and then he gets he goes from being sweet and kind to sweet and kind and handsome, and then he's rejected at the moment where he's the most vulnerable. And I remember I was a kid, right? My, my, I remember being touched by that. I felt for this guy, right? Mm-hmm. What's he going to do now? Where's he going to go? And, uh, you know, we kind of a girl could fall for that kind of vulnerability, especially when they're uh, technically a prince. More mm-hmm. so than the frog prince. You turned him back into a prince and he was a jerk. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, you go ahead and leave. I wouldn't want you anyway. <laughs> Yeah, when when Edgar proposed, I was like, "No, not now, mate. This is a terrible. Have you not been paying attention? <laughs> funny, <laughs> Bloody, she, Give it some time. Her father's dying, and she's she's got to go save him. Like this is the whole Read really the right now. Yeah, <laughs> like maybe offer Read to go room, back yeah. with her and keep her safe. But like, geez. <laughs> and I think that's about all the time we have for tonight. Maybe maybe I should have said that about ten minutes ago. But you can find <laughs> us. You know, we're a group. Uh, we're on Facebook. Uh, it's the uh, Classic Gamers Guild. Uh, we also have a page. Uh, you can find us on Twitter. We're at the CG Guild. Or you can even shoot us an email. Mail at ClassicGamersGuild.com I want to thank you, the listeners, for tuning in. We do this for you guys every week. We wouldn't just do it for ourselves. We find ourselves boring. But I'm sure you don't because you keep coming back. Uh, I also want to thank the... Uh, the Patreon subscribers for making the show possible, uh, as well as the uh, extra special thanks tier Patreon subscribers, Jay Holmes and Mark Fillion. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, 
And uh, I look forward to uh, us talking at you next week. Don't do a murder.